Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. So we have been talking about probability and till now we have been talking about different concepts of prior probability like uh, frequentist approach or classical approach. Now we will make a shift in the gear and we are going to talk about posterior probability and this we will see how that is significantly different from what we have learned and posterior probability uh, by virtue of uh, its uh, advancement in the probability theory is actually something that is pretty widely used in today's world be it in the world of physics, chemistry or any other science, be it in the world of machine learning, be it in the world of economics, be it in the world of trade, it has a huge huge implication and that is why uh, the particular example of posterior probability which you are going to see is the Bayesian theorem and we will see. Uh, uh, Bayesian theorem is perhaps one of the most most significant uh, theorem that we learn in this course or you know in, in, in statistics for that matter. Unfortunately, uh, in this course though we will talk about Bayes theorem in this lecture, but you know the, for other uh, you know other, other topics we will essentially you know uh, use uh, frequentist approach. The reason being is that the Bayes theorem though uh, it is uh, well known and we understand the significance of Bayes theorem vis-a-vis uh, the other approaches of probability, uh, this field is still in the you know uh, so still uh, advancing itself, it is still emerging. So, we will not be able to really use all the possible uh, implication of Bayes theorem in all the different uh, you know topics of econometrics, but uh, we, we sort of give due importance to this topic in this lecture. So, with this let me start what do I understand what, what do I mean by posterior probability. Now, posterior probability is something where you use you know the evidences from the random trial. So, if suppose you are having you know a random experiment and you are you know getting some probability value in one of the trial and in the next trial what you do is you use the result of the previous trial, you update the probability that way. So, every trial you run you take the probability of the previous trial and you update the probability of this trial. So, as you keep on you know uh, running multiple trials your probability keeps on up, updated and it is absolutely consulting or it is absolutely taking into account the probability that you got in your previous trials right. So, that is the beauty of it and the why it is so uh, sort of popular or why it is so relevant or useful is that the reason is that you are in one trial you are not restricted in one trial. So, in one trial you can get a probability, but you know if you get something repeatedly your chances of being uh, correct is much higher, your chances increase in terms of being corrected being being correct in your um, uh, in your sort of conclusion. So, we also say it is a way to continuously update our beliefs ok. So, we know certain thing, but the, the more and more experiment we run the more and more probability values we get what we get is actually we get a chance to update our belief about certain things. Now, how it is a diff how it is a departure or how it is similar with the you know different concepts we have learned in prior probability. So, let us say in prior probability we have learned something called classical approach. So, we are actually going to use all the different you know the probability rules that you have derived in in uh, you know like when you are talking about this prior probability concepts. We are also going to use the historical facts. It is not that when I say posterior probability we completely depart from you know the previous concepts of probability it is not. We actually are going to use all the concepts that you learned for example, we will be, will be using the uh, you know the pro, you know the sort of priors from the historical facts which is essentially a frequentist approach ok. So, we will see with some examples, but before I give you example let me also illustrate uh, let me actually tell you you know how the Bayes theorem came and then we will be able to understand the significance of Bayes theorem and then I will give you some examples where the Bayes theorem is used. So, that way we will have some understanding about the Bayes theorem before we actually jump into solving a problem. So, Bayes theorem let me write down Bayes theorem and I must pay my tribute to the person Reverend Thomas Bayes ok. So, he was a minister of a church and uh, you know like how this theory actually come into place. I think it is always very intriguing to understand how certain things come into place and how that thing has become so popular, how that thing has become you know accepted by everyone ok. So, the story of almost you know like many many years back I think back in 17 you know like mid 18th century. Uh, when 
the, so Reverend uh, Thomas Bayes is a minister of a church, as I said. So there was a, always a debate about resurrection of Christ, right? If if you can, you know, if you are going to get back, we are actually going to see uh, Christ to come into life. Okay, so that was the topic, and there was an essay by uh, one, uh, you know, uh, that time uh, renowned scholar Hume. So he kind of said that, uh, you know, once a man is dead, is dead. So there is no chance of coming back. And uh, so then, you know, there is a question that is there a chance that, you know, I mean, how do I say, how do I say with certainty that a man, once a man is dead, he is not going to come back, right? So for Hume, it was more like a evidence. He saw so many evidence that nobody came back. So then he, he concluded that there is no chance that Christ, Christ is going to come back. Now, for Bayes, he kind of took a mathematical angle and he tried to understand, all right, so how much evidence do I need to claim to say that, well, there is a chance that Christ will come back, right? So it is basically not on a very serious note. He kind of uh, derived this formulae, okay, to kind of uh, calculate that, okay, how much evidence do I need to be certain about something, okay? And that is the crux of the whole thing. that. How, given certain amount of evidence, what can you say about it, right? And that's 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 all about it. And we'll see the examples of Bayes' theorem, and we'll understand why it is uh, so important. So let me give you one example, one practical example, and that is actually a very recent example, and uh, that's uh, that's actually uh, you know uh, happened in uh, the one of the flight crash in Malaysian uh, you know airlines that flight crash in 2014. Uh, airline 17, I think, is the name. So when that flight crashed somewhere in Ukraine, so what happened is that all the people on board died, okay? And there was nothing remained almost after the crash and it was very difficult to identify who is who and you know like, uh, so what happened is you know like, uh, but you know, you always want to get your uh, you know relatives and give them a proper sort of funeral, right? So then uh, all the family members of different uh, you know victims, so they kind of, try to identify them. So then there was a machine called Bonaparte. And this example I'm taking uh, from the book, uh, uh, the book of why by Julia Pearl. Uh, so the, what happened is that the, Bonap the, the machine Bonaparte, it kind of, you know, like so the, none of the victims had their DNA actually preserved, right? Because they are not criminals. So, so what happened is that the DNAs of their family members, near and dear ones, where the chances of DNA matching is much higher, so their DNA was taken. And this using this Bonaparte machine, so what it did was that it continually sort of matched the DNA of the family members with the DNA of those victims, okay? And based on these repeated trials, based on repeatedly confirming if someone, you know, ma is matching the DNA of certain family member, so they are able to confirm the uh, who exactly is that victim, who, which family does he belong. And that way, uh, I think out of 298, it detected, I think around 295 and 296 victims. So that was a very, very powerful result uh, that we obtained using Bayes' theorem. Uh, there are many other uh, examples where Bayes' theorem is actually really, really very helpful. So for example, today we always talk about this AI ML, right? And what happens in this AI and ML algorithm is that we always try to, the AI and ML algorithm tries to learn from data, right? So why, when it tries to learn from data, it needs to confirm, it needs to confirm uh, with certainty, you know, with repeated trials, how much it is learned. And that is, you know, a new, you know, uh, sort of uh, area within this uh, ML literature is that Bayesian network. So that in Bayesian network, it kind of repeatedly confirms the, uh, thus with certainty about its learning. So that, that has a huge uh, you know, implication. There are many other um, implications of Bayes' theorem. I mean, I can keep telling, you know, keep on telling. But some other example, for example, in healthcare, and we're going to see some examples of uh, how Bayes' theorem is used in healthcare. So for example, we have like, uh, you know, like uh, you, have a, you have, you have, you are detected with some disease, right? Now, when you're detected with the disease, uh, how much certain you are that you actually have that disease, right? And if you don't know that, and if, you, if you're not sure about that, you can actually run the test again, and then you will see the drastic change in probability 
of whether you actually had disease or not and we'll actually do an example to do that for example if you if you're tested with covid or you're tested with maybe cancer or anything very bad so you want to ensure that whether you had it so you 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 know if you if you see that such, such kind of result you might freak out but then if you run second test you know like depending on whether you come out uh, you know come out as positive or negative your probability value will drastically change and we'll see that the, you know in in an example i mean there are there are n number of examples in different fields and this is how it is used basically you understood the principle we'll do another example where we are going to where we'll see that say uh, you know say detection of diamond or detection of uh, you know any any kind of detection exercise so where you kind of see in the first trial you kind of identify something as a diamond uh, and in the second trial if it is confirmed as diamond again so then it is a diamond right but if it is not then 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 the pro pro probability value will drastically decrease so essentially you it gives an objective way for you to understand uh, whether uh, you can say certain things with certainty right so if i can claim something to be diamond if i can claim i have covid and you know i kind of keep on updating my belief with repeated trials and tell with certainty uh, if if that is the case so that's basically the theory uh, part that we need to learn about bayes theorem and with this we are going to do one problem let's say let's say uh, you are detected with covid okay with covid and we have couple of examples a uh, couple of information in our hand I, as i said at the beginning that i need to have a prior and the prior means that i have information about the distribution of covid in my population so let's say that one person in every 1000 person has covid so this information i already have okay and i call it a prior let me use a different color i already call it a prior okay one person in every 1000 person has covid so this is my prior and i also have an information test accuracy and this is where we see how this test accuracy a little bit of test accuracy matters so much so let's say the test accuracy is 99% so in 99 cases um you actually see uh, you actually get the right result so if i do not have covid so in 99 uh, cases it will say 99% cases it will say that i do not have covid on the other hand if i have covid in 99% cases it will say i have covid okay but in 1% cases it will give me the contrary result okay so let's see how that 1% thing actually matters so now you actually have gone to test yourself and you actually this information you already have you actually have gone to test yourself and you have found yourself to be uh, covid positive so you actually have covid based on the result now what will happen if uh, you know how certain you should be about your uh, disease okay okay so that is that is the uh, problem we'll try to address and let's actually see how much probability actually i have of actually getting covid so let's say the first case i will so there are different you know some different graphical approach to solve this kind of problems and i'll uh, share with you couple of these approaches so let's say uh, in my population as i said say in a population of 1000 one person has covid so let's say this is the population with covid okay so let's uh, sorry no covid so this is a no covid population and there are 999 out of 1000 so i will just you know write down the number of people considering the a uh, number of people with or without covid considering the population of 1000 and say this is a covid population right now i have tested i have tested myself so i can either be from covid or i can be from no covid right now if i you know for the draw this let's say the test is done the test is done and i know the accuracy of test is uh, 99% so if the first case of no covid if it is done accurately if it is done accurately so the 99% chance is what so i will have no covid because i am if i am in the no covid population so 99% cases it should tell me no covid 
Whereas, there is a 1% chance, 1% chance, which is the wrong thing, which is the wrong test, you know, the test giving wrong result. So, that will tell me COVID. Oops, sorry, I should use the same color. It will tell me COVID. So, essentially it means that I am a no COVID person, but the moment I am tested, I am told COVID and that is because of the error in the detection. Okay? Now, if we, if we have understood that, then we should be able to actually constitute the second part of the, uh, gra uh, of the, of the uh, yeah, graph. So, you, uh, I will say that you pause the video here and actually you try to constitute this. Okay, so, let us actually try to constitute this. So, now that I have COVID, I have COVID, so the test is 99 percent accurate. So, what uh, would be the outcome here? The outcome here would be COVID because now this is the COVID is the accurate result. So, I already have COVID. So, in 99 percent cases, I should get COVID, right? Whereas, for 1 percent cases where the test is wrong, a person who, who has COVID is tested wrongly would be no COVID, right? So, that is now that is that is the that is the first uh, level of detailing uh, which is done to understand how do I actually solve the problem. Okay? Uh, now, I have to say, you know, uh, what is the probability that I actually have COVID. Given this uh, prior, given this information about test accuracy, I have to tell what is the probability that I actually have COVID. Let us actually try to say, let us write it that probability probability that I have COVID given the test is positive. So, because I told you that somehow I am detected positive, I am detected positive. So, now I have to tell that given that I am detected positive, what is the probability that I actually have COVID? Okay? And let us actually compute that. So, I am detected positive. So, that means I am either from here or from here. right? So, if I, let us say this is case 1, this is case 2. So, if, so the total number of cases will be A plus B and the true case, true case that I actually have COVID is essentially this one, essentially I will use this color, essentially the true case, this is the true case, right? Essentially this one, right? Because I actually have COVID and I am also tested positive. So, that has, this has to happen. So, if that is the case, I will write on the numerator, it will be B to simplify the whole thing. That is it. That is the simple thing about Bayesian probability. Now, if I compute this, what will be the value? So, B is 1 into 99 by 100 and my A is going to be 999 into 1 by 100 plus here it is, uh, it is this, this one, the B, right? So, it is 1 into 99 by 100. Now, I have to calculate this, but I think it should be something around 9 point, I think it is 99 on the numerator and in the denominator 1098, just let me calculate it here, 99 by 1098, it should be something around, yeah, point 9.02 point or 01, something like that, 9.02 percent. So, Essentially, it means the very interesting result we got. So, essentially, it means that though I am tested positive, though I am tested positive, given the fact that the, I have some number about the, the accuracy of the test and I have some information about the prior, I actually have a chance of only 9.02 percent of COVID. So, is not it interesting? So, even if I am tested positive, I should not be so worried because the actual probability of me having COVID is only 9 percent, 9.02 percent, and that is it. So, this is how we should try to understand, uh, you know, like using Bayes theorem uh, about what is the uh, real scenario. And this is the beauty because we can actually, this is the first level uh, of, in, you know, like uh, uh, first level of trial we got and we got the probability and we see that it is actually low. And we will see in the next uh, uh, example how we can continually update. But before we get into that, let me actually you know, do the same problem with a different approach. So, we will do the same graphical, uh, we will take the same graphical approach, uh, but uh, in a slightly different manner. Okay? So, let us do that. So, the same example we are going to do. So, let us say, uh, my, info, my data was that I have 
only in one only thousand person one has COVID, right? So let's say, let me actually take. So if it is th one in thousand, I just want to sort of make a little bigger number so that uh, it is easier for me to draw. So one in thousand, I can also approximately write basically write ten in uh, ten thousand, right? It's the same thing. Now let's have the full population here. Hmm? So, when I have this, um, this uh, 10 in 10,000, so that means this part, this part is actually people who have COVID, right, who have COVID. So, essentially that is the number 10, right. And here the rest of the people who do not have COVID, so that is 9990. I am counting out of, uh, out of, um, 10,000. So, this people do not have COVID. Okay. Now, my test accuracy, my test uh, accuracy is 99%. Okay. So, if my, if I, you know, uh, use this test for this on this 10 people. So, what I will have is that uh, if I multiply, if I multiply this test accuracy, you know, in, with the total number of individuals who actually have COVID, I will get 9.9, .9, right? So, given, you know, given the test accuracy is 99%, actual number of people who have COVID, let's say, or who are identified as COVID is, say, this red color strip, which is, which is 9.9. .9. This red color is 9.9, .9, right? In the same vein, since the test accuracy is 99%, so it means uh, the inaccuracy test inaccuracy is 1% and if my test inaccuracy is 1% what I will have for these people now I have to calculate inaccuracy on these people because these people only if the test is inaccurate they will be diagnosed as COVID right. So that means that will mean 9990 into 1 by 100 so which would mean 99.9 .9. so 99.9 .9 individuals they will have COVID wrongly. So, let us say this is the 90, this is the 99.9, .9. this is the 99.9 .9 individuals who are diagnosed with COVID wrongly, okay. Now, in my data set, what I have now is this two number, one is 9.9 .9, who are actually, who actually have COVID and the other 99.9 .9, who are diagnosed with COVID but who do not have COVID, right? So then the probability that someone diagnosed with COVID actually has COVID is only that will be reflected by this number because they are the true cases, right? This is the true cases. So the true cases, the, the probability, let me use a different color, the probability, probability of someone with COVID given the cases of you know, uh, tested positive. So, tested positive, this is tested po positive, this is tested positive, but this is the true cases, okay. So, then actual COVID is, you know, the true cases are 9.9 .9 in the numerator and on the denominator 9.9 .9 plus 99.9, .9, which is essentially 9.9 .9 by uh, how much would this be? 18. Uh, 109 I guess right. Now if I do this 9.9 .9 by 108, let me get to that 9.9 .9 by 108, let me see what is that, 109.8, sorry 109.8 is going to give me the same number, the same number here, the uh, same probability which is 9.01 or 9.02, essentially it is 9.02%, right? So, you can either do this, uh, you know, branching approach, graphical approach, or you can actually calculate the area uh, under this curve, under, uh, you know, and that's that way uh, you can actually um, calculate the probability of actual, uh, you know, probability of something uh, to happen actually in reality. Uh, and there you use the probability of uh, other things. So, here we are using, you know, probability 
of someone you know who does not have COVID but diagnosed as COVID and who, who has COVID diagnosed as COVID. So, we are basically considering all the facts. So, this is how we you know these are two different approaches I have shown to calculate Bayesian probability. Uh, what we will do is we will do couple of more uh, some uh, of similar problems and we will also uh, we will see this is the first uh, level we actually get the probability value and we will try to actually update the probability to see what happens in the next trial if I get uh, the same result. Okay? So, with this we will uh, conclude the first lecture on Bayesian theorem on, and the posterior probability.